Well, hello there, friends and traders right around the world. It is James here with you on behalf of Pivot Point Trading, bringing you this Thursday afternoon market recap. Obviously, over the weekend in Saturday's pro class, we pointed out and made very clear that today's trading session is going to be very important. What the Fed does in regards to their monetary policy today around 2 p.m., the Federal Reserve once again announced that it was delaying liftoff in terms of raising interest rates. So it appears as though they're doing everything they can to calm the market and please market participants. What is very interesting though is that although this news, if we break it down and say that, look, if Feds were left unchanged, which is the case, that should be the most bullish of the two outcomes. Of, of course, if in fact the Fed did lift off and they did start to begin or going about a raising rates, that would be very bearish for the overall equity markets. What's interesting today though, however, is that although uh, rates have been left unchanged, the net market movement in terms of direction is that the Dow Jones Industrial Average actually closed down 65 points on the daily chart. We can see also right here, we have a very, very similar candle to that of a shooting star individual daily candlestick on the S&P 500, a very similar type of candlestick as well. We were down 5.1 points, another type of shooting star candle. And this is on the back of an interest rate no change policy. So the market participants themselves, although the market did rally intraday and it did push on up very, very quickly, the gains associated with that liftoff were given back to the market as the trading session progressed. Instead, we actually ended in the negative for the, for the daily type of range. If we change to the NASDAQ as well, although this is a positive white candle, the close was above the open of today's trading range. We can see that we have also very much so a textbook shooting star candlestick. Now, in terms of technical analysis, so putting the fundamentals to the side and understanding that now we know what the Fed is going on about or what their course of action is at least into at least the end of 2015 and taking back into the technical picture, we've had drawn on our chart for quite some time these major red boxes. Where is the price action moving into and where are we starting to see these upper wicks? If you haven't put this together or the parts of the jigsaw together, the upper wicks are selling pressure on the equity markets. I've been speaking about this for quite some time. Let's have a look at the Dow Jones Industrial Average. Although we are not right back up to both horizontal resistance and also a back test of the primary trend line, not to mention these Fibonacci uh, retracement boxes and also just this plethora of overhead resistance up here, just above 17,000, although we are getting close, we are at 16,674, we are starting to see this market once again retrace back into varying levels of declining resistance, whether that is the exponential moving averages, as you can see in my screen, or we still have quite a ways to go until we finally reach either the 100 or the 200. It doesn't come as any surprise to see this rally intraday fizzle out. If I, or What I have been doing also is during the week, I've been speaking to a lot of people about the structure and the state of the overall markets. I've spoken about the shooting star candlestick, which we have seen today, which again has probably whipsawed a lot of bulls into jumping into a lot of positions uh, post a FOMC meeting discussion or announcement. But having a look at just the general terms of chart patterns and speaking to a lot of people and conveying this message to them, even when we look at the indices, this really looks like a pennant or a wedge type of bearish continuation. So the actual chart pattern itself is still overly bearish. When we go through and have a look at the S&P 500, you can see a very, very similar type of chart pattern. This looks very much so like a wedge. This generally resolves itself in the direction of the trend. And when we speak about trend direction, it really appears as though is that the primary trend, not even the intermediate, but also the primary, has shifted. It shifted during the months of May. It shifted during the months of June and also July. Definitely, when we started to break that long-term primary trend, Dating back to August 2015, when we saw the short-term capitulation in this market. So the actual chart patterns themselves, in terms of sentiment and also psychology, is that we're actually going to see a sell-off at least back down to 15,638. We may move down to this level and once again continue on the slope of Hope Rally back up to this higher level. But when we break this down technically and we see the overhead resistance, we see these early reversal candlestick signals warning us that we may be at least carving out a short-term top. And on top of that, we have a lot 
of bearish trade setup, which we spoke about over the weekend, which I am very, very, very excited about. You really need to understand that this market, once again, may have eked out a short-term high. I'm not going to go out on a limb right now and say that, look, we are expecting a bearish continuation. But if I had to decide based on probabilities, it would definitely be a continuation or at least a retest back down to these old support levels. Let me just run through a couple of stocks which we've been following, which are definitely giving us these types of signals. Walgreens Boots and Alliance, we've been following very, very closely. Redbox, what are we seeing? On top of a double retest into that box, we're also seeing two right now, as it stands, dark candlesticks suggesting that we are starting to see selling pressure. You see these two dark candlesticks right here? We've got this little top rounding out. This will be the essentially the first lower high relative to the July and August high, which we made in Walgreens Boots and Alliance. Natural progression is the rollover. So I really like that Walgreens Boots and Alliance trade. Let's have a look at Netflix. Let's see if Netflix has given us anything new. No, it has not. IBM, once again, is flirting all around that lower type of trigger. But even when we look at these charts, such as Goldman Sachs, 178.88, although it isn't confirmed yet, we're starting once again to see the rejection at the red box. This is the third time. One, two, three. Outside of this, getting into more so my favorite types of trade setups, definitely CVX below 73.92. Based on where the market is, this could be a very quick trade down to 70.67. I'll bring you more analysis on these trades over the weekend. We've got Caterpillar as well, which has got a very, very nice one black crow type of uh, candlestick pattern right here. A very interesting type of movement, which we should see in Caterpillar over the coming week. Baidu, again, is another stock which is definitely getting into a coil. Have a look at this Bollinger Band squeeze setting up on Baidu. I'm very, very excited about this trade. You see the top band and the lower band? Given another week or so, this is going to be a full-on fledged Bollinger Band squeeze type of trade, which we're going to see volatility ultimately break this out above or below those ranges. Have a look at Boeing Airlines as well. This is why I'm so excited and why my analysis is telling me that maybe the markets have got one little down leg to go before it really shakes out that intermediate bottom. Have a look at this shooting star type of candlestick right in the red resistance box, which we've had drawn in Boeing or on the chart of Boeing Airlines for quite some time. Have a look at this. By the way, um, I still have a little bit of the flu, so I'm a little bit congested right now, and I'm not sure how I'm actually sounding, so just bear with me. My nose is running, and um, my, again, my sinuses are a little congested right now, so just bear with me for the next couple of minutes as I finish out this Thursday afternoon market recap. Have a look at this shooting star candle right here on Boeing Airlines, right in the middle of this red box. Perfect location for this stock to ultimately roll over right here. Although we don't really have too much of an aggressive entry, 131.06 was over the weekend. I will bring you more analysis on Boeing Airlines uh, on Saturday. Obviously, we only have one trading session. And to really position yourself into this aggressively, you need to get in about 133.88. Don't worry, though. You will have the opportunity to re-enter into this over the weekend. Amazon, once again, pushed on up a little bit higher. We also have Apple rolling over. Have a look at this. It hasn't even got as high as the red box now screen before we've started to see resistance pressure and selling pressure flow back into Apple. So pay attention to this. This will be another potential blockbuster trade setup. And outside of that, we also have, well, we will have this Saturday bi-directional trade setups on the overall markets themselves. So if you want to learn about that, have a look at that pro course, but really just to surmise what's happened today, the Fed has come out. They've left rates unchanged. Generally, we'd expect a very bullish type of reaction by market participants because again, the status quo remains. However, market participants actually sold this news. It was somewhat of a net negative day, at least on two of the markets. And it's really got me questioning once again, just how weak this market is. If the market isn't going to rally on the back of a no change, then what's going to make this rally or make this market actually rally? Further into 2015, it really looks as if we're going through a transitional type of period in the equity markets and also for a lot of individual stock trends, which is starting to reverse. Uh, the only exception to this uh, theory right now is the ultimatum or the announcement of a formal QE4. Obviously, we've had QE1, QE2, QE3 in Operation Twist. If the Fed does announce QE4, which a lot of people don't see coming, we may actually see this in 2016. Then, of course, the bearish continuation goes out the window immediately. But until that is formally announced, and again, this is something which will take months, if not half a year, maybe even closer to a year, and it may even be reactionary to some form of a formal crisis in 2016. That is really the only piece of central banking which can really propel this market higher. Almost exhausted in terms of what they can do, 
The best that they can do is keep money free in terms of uh, business investment and investing in the actual market itself. Liquidity starting to dry up. Potentially, we are moving into, once again, deflationary types of pressures. Inflation reported most recently, a couple of days ago, came out flat. So there actually isn't inflation in the business cycle. So that really gives us a good gauge on where we are in terms of market cycles and also the business cycle. If inflation is really subsiding and we're moving into once again or the fed is trying to starve off a deflationary type of environment but as at thursday this is all which i need to cover pay attention to though because this pattern right here is very very bearish it's got bearish continuation written all over it and once again to put the upper wick of the daily candlestick once again today on the back of that fundamental news to see that ultimate rejection it's just screaming out bearish continuation. We have a lot of individual trades which are looking exceptionally weak. They've made it into that red box and they're looking to at least reverse based on the individual types of candles which we've seen today in terms of shooting stars. So I just wanted to bring that and make that very clear. I hope we are all on the same page as at this Thursday afternoon. A very important pro analysis class again this Saturday. If you'd like to have a look, please sign up. Outside of that, traders and friends, I am going to sign off. It is a very, very early morning. or well, not too early. It's actually about 6 a.m. here in Brisbane, Australia. Have a fantastic day, no matter where you are located right around the world. If you have any questions whatsoever, please email me, success at pivotpoint-trading.com. Have a fantastic evening, everybody. All the best. Goodbye.